okay so now let's uh, quickly go over the horizontal and vertical stretch that's your vertical and horizontal expansion compression okay so for vertical remember that we talked about this if you have a in front so the a is the crucial piece right here then you have uh, depending on what a is you have a expansion or compression and it's vertical it's vertical so if a is greater than one then definitely you have an expansion vertical expansion by that factor of a if a is between 0 and 1 then you have a vertical compression by factor of a okay and these are the two examples if you have 2 to the x uh, that's the original function right here 2 to the x and if you have f of x equal to 3 times 2 to the x notice that this 3 is greater than 1 so that would be vertical expansion by a factor of 3 that means every single y coordinate y value of the original graph it will be tripled that's what it will be and then you plot them and that's what you will get and we went through uh, and I'm going to show you uh, a graph of that and then we do the same thing with the one third so if there's another example we have a original two to the x now we're going to put one third in front and two to the x stays the same two is the base the exponent is x so this one third represents the vertical compression by a factor of one third that means that every single y value for the graph uh, all the points on the original graph will be compressed by a factor of a third so let's look at this scenario with the uh, a in front that's the vertical expansion and compression factor i put the slider on so look at what happens as i am moving this and i move that to let's say uh let's start with the between zero and one that fraction remember that was the horizontal compression and sure enough it is so if i put in here let's say go to 0 0.5 if I do 0.5 right there, that means that the y value has been halved. So 1 became a half. That's the y value. That's the y coordinate. Okay. The, basically, the, the vertically, it being compressed by a factor of half. Now, if I go over and then add, let's say, a is 2, it's a vertical expansion by a factor of 2. Of course, from 1, it goes up to 2 but that's the vertical expansion it's not the actually a movement of the graph uh, upward but it's the vertical expansion okay and then of course if I go to 3 and notice that yeah it triples the y value triples okay so now let's look at the horizontal expansion and compression and then re uh, a quick review uh, if we have B that is the coefficient in front of the x so not in front of the um, f of x but right beside x then b represents the expansion and compression factor but it's horizontal okay and the, the part that you have to pay attention to is that if it's a fraction between 0 and 1 then the it, that represents the horizontal expansion by 1 over b okay that's 1 over b that means you actually have to use the reciprocal of b to get the expansion factor i'm going to explain that to you in the bottom example if b is greater than 1 you do the same thing but this time that represents the horizontal compression so it's kind of backwards okay and that's what that is so let's suppose we go back to the or parent function y equal to the x and we have this uh, 2 to the 1 half x so this represents this two sorry one half right here that represents that represents the horizontal expansion by a factor of two not one half but two and it is an expansion okay so you flip that let's look at this function 2 to the power of 2x okay then in this case what you will have is that this 2 in front in reference to the original you're referencing referencing it comparing it to the original parent function what will happen is that that 2 represents this 2 represents horizontal 
compression by a factor of now it becomes 1 over 2 okay because it's compressing by a factor of half okay and now let's go to the Desmos to look at it here it is so let's start off with the 2 to the X and if I this is the original function we have and then if I go ahead and do the 2 to the 2 to the X I didn't add I didn't add any value for the the y the 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 vertical shift just to make it easier but look what happened this represents the horizontal compression by a factor of half what that means is this every single value of the original function every single x value of the original function uh, they compress by a factor of half to get the same value of y okay simple as that look at this one for example if this one was uh, the blue graph of 1 X was 1 and you got 2 now for the compressed X is half which is right there that's half and 2 okay so so you can see what has happened to get the same value of Y the transformed graph has to have a half the value of the X for every single coordinate on there okay and all of them are like that they map the same the only thing that does not make a difference is the invariant point which is the Y intercept 0 1 now let's look at what happens when you have a half a X and again we know this that that becomes horizontal expansion by a factor of 2 so let's look at it again blue graph x is 1 you get the value 2 for y but for the same value of y you must double the value of x and that's why we called it call this the very sorry horizontal expansion by a factor of 2 to get the same value of y and this is true for every single point on the the transform graph is the y, the x value has to be doubled to get the same y value okay that is it so now the extension question why not a negative base for the exponential function remember that we said b has to be greater than zero so it can be negative value well let's go through some examples well if x is between 0 and 1 suppose to the x which x being a half and if that's the case this function would be minus 2 to the power of a half that means that would be a square root of minus 2 but there are no real solutions here no real solutions so no real solutions is a complex uh, answer it has all right so that cannot be so that's another example of that that cannot be but but then look what happens if if X is one-third that would be okay that should that wouldn't matter so minus 2 to the power of a third sure you get cube root of a negative number and that is allowed so in one case you don't have a solution in another case you have a solution so what happens is that when you try to graph this function um, exponential function anymore minus 2 to the X we don't know we are trying to explain that B cannot be a negative number and here is the perfect example of that the, you will not get an exponential function you will not get any type of a function it just we get random points that cannot be really attached to each other uh, and notice that it just doesn't make sense Desmos doesn't even try to graph this look at that it just doesn't do it because it can't really uh, compute what's happening that's one of the major reason that B cannot be negative because you just don't get exponential function the only way that you can get the exponential function if you, you have that specific restrictions for B which has to be greater than zero okay